Hello everybody and welcome to a brand new Elder Scrolls Online Roll video with me, Sherman. Today, guys, we're taking a look at the Soul Reaver Stamina DPS setup for the Soul Reaver character. And we're going to go over everything about it and how you can set it up for your, your own liking, if you so choose. Um, remember, everything in this video is just a suggestion. It is just me making those, the, showing you the tools that you can use as suggestions you do not have to use the same exact gear setup weapons tools anything like that you can choose how you want to do this um, but let's go ahead and get started all right as you can see this is the soul reaver character we are a nord necromancer we have 64 points in the stamina that's going to give us a whopping 30k um, stamina with the three thirty thousand three hundred and fifty three stamina twenty one thousand eighty eight max health and a twelve thousand seven sixty three max magica as you can see our stamina recovery is coming in at one thousand one hundred and ten with a health recovery of thirty two uh, three twenty one and a magic recovery of five thirty four our weapon damage is coming in at twenty six six or twenty nine sixty six with the forty one percent weapon critical that is unbuffed sixteen k spell resistance and physical resistance because we are a Nord. We are using the Lover Mundestone for greater penetration values, and we are using Dubious Cameron Throne as our food. Our Tam uh, Takeaway Broth is also another one you can use that'll give you stamina. Uh, sorry, max stamina and health and health recovery and stamina recovery. <clears throat> so taking a look at the foods, again, Dubious Cameron Throne, that is the better option for this for uh, stamina DPS. Another option that you can use is the dual stat food, uh, blue food, which will take you up to 24k health, 32k max stamina. And the, problem, the, the only issue is your, your stam recovery drops to about 688. If you can hold a and sustain with that, then you're good. All right, this is a medium armor build. <clears throat> Moving on to the, the, the potions, we are using the power pots. That is gonna give you stamina, major endurance, which is gonna increase your stam recovery by 20%. Also grants major brutality and major sorcery. Right, going over the gear set, starting with the monster set, we are using Veladrith's. Veladrith's is a really good set for stamina DPS, and for the Necromancer, it really kind of fits that, that theme of the disease damage. So as you can see, the one piece adds weapon damage, the two piece, when you deal damage, you have a 20% chance to summon or to spawn three disease spores in front of you after one second that deal 13,209 disease damage to the first enemy they hit. This effect can occur once every nine seconds. The next set we're using is an unusual set, but it's a really good one. It is called Gladiators, uh, Kvetch's Gladiator set. This one has a two piece of weapon critical, three piece weapon critical, four piece weapon damage, and then the five piece. When your target is under 25% health, add 1800 weapon damage to your light and heavy attacks. This basically boosts your light and heavy attack damage by a lot. We're talking like almost 7k weapon damage when you're totally buffed out. <clears throat> All right, moving on to the next set we're using. We are using Briar Hearts. Briar Hearts is another really good set that complements this build very well. As you can see, the, uh, the two piece bonus is weapon critical, three piece is max stamina, four piece is weapon critical, and then the five piece. When you deal critical damage, you have a 10% chance to increase your weapon damage by uh, 449 for 10 seconds. This, if, while this effect is active, your critical strikes heal you for 669 health. This effect is gonna occur once every 15 seconds. It does have a 10 second uptime with a five second downtime in between and that's on a 10% chance. This thing will be up pretty much nonstop. Uh, for t the, like, you'll have a, I think it's somewhere like a 60% uptime of it because of the five, per, uh, five second downtime. It comes out to about 60%. Sometimes even a little bit more if you're really good, you can get it up to like 75%. All right, now going over the traits on our, on our armor, we are using Sturdy on the helm. This way we can block some damage. We are using a reinforced chest. This is gonna give us increased resistances. And since our chest is heavy, it's gonna be a lot bulkier on the resistances. And then on the leggings, we have medium and we have Sturdy as well. Now, the reason we did this is so this way we can take advantage of the block cost reduction of the Sturdy pieces when we are tanking. 
and then the reinforce to help boost our resistances even when we are tanking or not tanking. And the smaller pieces are divines. This is going to allow us to swap Munda stones and utilize Munda stones more effectively. So we do have four divines on the small pieces. And as you can see, the enchants on the big pieces are tristat. This is this allows you for a more flexible um, hybridized character, so you can play any of the three roles, tank, healer, and damage dealer. On the smaller pieces, we do have max stamina. This is primarily a stamina build, so it works really good as, a, as purely stamina based. Moving on to the jewelry, we are running two tri-runes with weapon damage on it, on the rings. This is going to give you that same ability to hybridize your character really well. And then we are using an infused shield play necklace, which reduces the cost of bash and block by, by 486 on the bash and 324 on the block cost. That just saves you stamina on those using those things. So if I'm going to bash somebody, as you can see, watch, I'll go down here. I'm going to actually just bash this guy. You guys can watch for yourselves. It doesn't take me that much stamina because of that block cost or that bash cost reduction. So... And even as a DPS, I bash a lot anyway, so. All right, moving on to the weapons. We are using a two-handed axe as our primary weapon. The reason I chose axe is with the passive for two-handed axes, you get a chance to apply a bleed with your light attacks and even your heavy attacks. It's a 16% chance. Uh, it is nerd honed with a disease enchant. Sticking to that theme of the necromancer. Moving on to the back bar, or the back weapon, we have a bow, Briarheart, with a we that is infused with a weapon damage enchant. This is going to help you maximize your max weapon damage <coughs> and allows you to push that weapon damage really high. <coughs> Don't mean to cough in your guys' ear. All right, now we're going to move on to the skills. And with your skills make sure you unlock all the class skills and passives that are going to fit your play style in this case we're more stamina based so we're going to unlock all the stamina grave lord abilities and on the bone tyrant we're going to unlock the things that are going to reflect us as a tank on the living death the things that reflect us as a healer <coughs> so moving on Two-handed is what we're primarily using here, and as you can see, we have all the two-handed skills and abilities unlocked, along with the passives. I choose the skills and abilities that best suit my playstyle, so you don't have to choose these ones. You can choose other ones. The other weapon we're using is a bow. Again, unlock the skills and abilities that are going to best reflect your ability with this and the passives that go with it. On to the armor, light armor. This is primarily here for when you're playing healer. Um, is why we have it, but it also helps when you're not, because even when you're not a healer, you are using one piece of light armor, and you can take advantage of some of the aspects, like the spell warding, uh, which increases your spell resistance by 363 for each piece of light armor equipped, evocation, which increases your magic recovery, uh, and cost of magic abilities by 2%, and reduce, uh, Recovery by 4%. This really affects more, more or less effects when you're playing the healer role or the tank role. And then the same thing goes with Grace. And Grace just gives you reduced effectiveness of snares applied to you by 4% for each piece of light armor equipped. And reduce the cost of sprint by 3% for each piece of light armor equipped. Moving on to medium armor. This is where we have all of our passives. And I would suggest you unlock the active ability for it. This way you have it available. All right, starting with Dexterity. Increases your weapon critical by 328 for each piece of medium armor equipped. We are wearing five medium. Um, the belt we have on is light. The chest is heavy. Everything else is medium. So the, the head, shoulders, boots, and um, legs, and then gloves are all medium. And then the, the belt is light and the chest is heavy. <clears throat> So that's how we're getting the 1643 extra weapon critical. And then moving on to Windwalker, this one increases your stamina recovery by 4% per piece of medium armor equipped. That's a 20% increase and reduces the cost of stamina abilities by 2% per piece of medium armor equipped. That's a 10% reduced cost. Improved Sneak, this is mostly for, I would say, if you're doing like Dark Brotherhood or the Thieves Guild or if you're doing like Cyrodiil and you're playing a scout character or you're ganking people. 
that's what this is for. This one reduces the cost of your snake by 7% for each piece of medium armor equipped. As you can see, that's a 35% reduced cost. And then reduces the size of your detection area while sneaking by 5% per piece of medium armor equipped. That's a 25% reduced um, detection size. Moving on, agility. When five or more pieces of armor, of medium armor equipped, you increase your weapon damage by 15%. This is really good for that high damage output. And then athletics increases your movement speed bonus of sprint by 3% for each piece of medium armor equipped. That's a 15% increase and then reduce the cost of your dodge roll by 4% for each piece of medium armor. That's 20%. We actually get a really good dodge roll reduction because of the fact that we have that 20% plus an extra 16 in our on our champion points so heavy armor resolve again this is more related to to playing when you're playing a tank because it's going to give you higher resistances increase your spell and physical resistance by 362 for each piece of armor equipped that's an extra 362 constitution increases health recovery by four percent for each piece of heavy armor equipped and then the final one here you, you can restore 108 magic and stamina when you take damage for each piece of heavy armor equipped this effect can occur once every four seconds and then we have juggernaut which increases your max health by two percent for each piece of heavy armor equipped current bonus is two percent that's going to add to your max health pool world skills you can be a vampire or werewolf with this um Either one is really good. Vampire is pretty good with this. Werewolf is definitely better because werewolf can take advantage of the high stamina. Moving on, we do have all of the, the ultimate, the active abilities, and the all passives unlocked on soul magic. The reason why is because soul shatter, when your health drops below 20%, um, your soul explodes, dealing 2,445 magic damage to enemies within 8 meters of you. This effect can occur once every 2 minutes. Soul Summons allows you to revive once every hour without a, spending a Soul Gem. Somebody actually pointed this out to me, the Soul Shatter. I never thought about that. It's actually pretty good. And if you're playing a Magicka character, it's even better. Soul Lock. Killing an, an enemy with a weapon ability has a 10% chance to automatically, of automatically filling an empty Soul Gem. <clears throat> and then moving on to the Fighter's Guild. Make sure you unlock the abilities and skills that reflect you and your playstyle. And then unlock the passives. Same thing for Mage's Guild and the passives. And in Sigic Order, I do the same thing. I unlock the skills. And mostly, as you can see here, I unlock that Crushing Weapon, the Stamina Morph. I did unlock Min Spirit because it's a really good heal if you want to play when you play a healer. And then we have Thieves Guild. Um, not Thieves Guild, sorry. Undaunted, where I unlocked all the passives and the uh, the passives and the active abilities. Make sure you get the Undaunted passives. Now, you can only get these from doing Dungeons in the game or trials so you can get it from doing daily delves as well through the undaunted um, quests but it's a lot easier just to do dungeons and as you can see here this one increases your max health and stamina and magicka by two percent for each piece of armor type equipped so that's one heavy one medium one light we are wearing five medium one light and one heavy that's going to give us that six percent increase on all stats Moving on to Alliance War, same thing, unlock the passives or the active abilities that you're going to best suit you. And if you do a lot of PvP, I would suggest unlocking everything in here and also over here because you never know when you might need this in those areas. Racial skills, Nord, and there is a reason I chose Nord for this particular setup. Re Revealer is one of them. Increase your experience gain with two-handed weapons by 15%. Also increases the duration of any consumed drink by 15 minutes. So when you use Dubious Cameron Throne, you get an extra 15 minutes added to the two hours. So that's two hours and 15 minutes. When you add the 20 minutes from the crafting provisioning passive, that is a 35 minute increase. So you actually get two hours and 35 minutes with the Nord. And that's with Dubious Cameron Throne or Witch Mother's Potent Brew. All right, moving on, Resist Frost. This one increases your max health by 1,000 and your Cold Resistance by 2310. Cold Resistance basically applies to your, your base resistances. It gets added to it, and any t that's any time you take Cold or Frost damage. So it works really good in those frozen areas of the game. Um, also, you gain immunity to shield status effect. <clears throat> 
Stalwart increases your max stamina by 1500, and when you take damage, you gain 5 ultimate. This effect can occur once every 10 seconds. This makes them really effective when tanking, or even as a DPS, because they can generate ultimate better than anybody. Next up is Rugged. Increase your spell and physical resistance by 3960. This just makes you tanky, period. And that's what makes uh, Nords very uh, versatile, is they have such a, a high natural resistance. Moving on to crafting, alchemy, medicinal use. This was when using a potion, resulting effects last 30% longer. So it makes your potions last longer, so you can use them more effectively. And then provisioning, gourmet and connoisseur. This just basically adds 20 minutes to your duration of eating food and for drinks. So this 20 minutes plus the 15 minutes really helps the Nord in a big way. <clears throat> Alright, now let's go over the skills we have set on our bar, starting with the first skill. We have Carve. Now Carve does a large swing, dealing um, 6,297 physical damage to enemies in front of you. This is a cone attack, so it hits multiple targets, and it does apply the bleed to multiple targets. So... So it hits the targets in front of you and causing them to bleed for an additional 12,045 physical damage over 10 seconds. This isn't quite as good as Dawnbreaker, but it can, it can add up with Dawnbreaker quite well. <laughs> Moving on, we have Venom Skull. Lava and Explosive Skull at an enemy dealing 7,557 poison damage. <clears throat> Every third cast of this ability deals 20% increased damage. While slotted, casting any Necromancer ability while you are in combat will count towards the third cast. Next ability we have is our Blighted Blast Bones. And this is pr our primary pa uh, spammable, by the way, Venom Skull is. Blighted Blast Bones summon a decaying skeleton from the ground. After 2.5 seconds, the skeleton runs after the target and explodes. When it gets close to them, dealing 12,597 disease damage to all enemies nearby and applying major defile to them for 4 seconds, reducing their healing received and health recovery by 30%. It does create a corpse on death. Next ability we have is Executioner. This one spin and around and strike your enemies down, dealing 4,064 physical damage. Deals up to 350% more damage to enemies with less than 50% health. This becomes my primary spammable when I get the enemies below 50% health. What I'll do is I'll run my rotation. Carve, Light Attack, Venom Skull, Light Attack, blast, Blighted Blast Bones, Light Attack, and then Executioner Strike. And I'll do it about three times with Light Attacks in weaved in between. Next, we have Skeletal Archer. Unearth Skeletal Archer from the dirt to fight by your side for 16 seconds. The Archer attacks the closest enemy every 2 seconds, dealing 2,517 physical damage. Each time the Archer deals damage, damage its next attack will do 10% more damage than the previous attack, and it does also create a corpse on death. Last one we have is our ultimate, and that is Flawless Dawnbreaker. A lot of people use this as uh, stamp for stamina builds because it adds 5% weapon damage. Now arm yourself with Meridia's Sacred Sword and dispense her retribution dealing 10,506 physical damage to enemies in front of you and an additional 12,726 physical damage over 6 seconds. While slotted, your weapon is damage is increased by 5%. Moving on to back bar, we have Rearming Trap. Set a, a sharpened blade trap at your location, which takes 1.5 seconds to arm and lasts one minute. When triggering, the trap deals 2,435 physical damage and additional 6,984 physical damage over six seconds, immobilizes the enemy for six seconds, and grants mi you minor force, increasing your critical damage done by 10%. After being triggered, the trap resets and can be triggered one more time. So it has a 12 second uptime in total. Next, we have Poison Injection. Shoot an arrow coated with Bandari Poison at an enemy, dealing 4,318 poison damage and an additional 8,710 poison damage over 10 seconds. The damage over time deals up to 260% more damage to enemies under 50% health. This is basically like a bow execute, but it does, it's not as, I would say, as effective as Executioner Strike. Because you have to let it run the duration of the 10 second ticking. Now moving on, we have Endless Hail. This one launch a multitude of arrows into the sky to rain down, dealing 1,116 physical damage to enemies in the target area every 0.5 seconds for 10 seconds. 
Then we have Razor Caltrops. This one hurl an exploding ball of Caltrops that scatter over the target area, dealing 1,674 poison or physical damage every second and reducing their movement speed by 30%. When the ball of uh, ball of Caltrops initially explodes, it deals an immediate 5,221 physical damage. Last one we have here is a synergy. It's a really great synergy, great for in groups. Hurl webs to ensnare your foes, reducing the movement speed of enemies in the area by 50%. After 5 seconds, the webs explode, dealing 7,431 poison damage to enemies within. A ranged ally targeting an enemy in the webs can activate the Black Widow synergy, dealing 8,604 poison damage to the enemy and summoning two spiders to attack for 15 seconds. The spiders bite enemies for 2,087 physical damage and can poison them for 9,000 poison damage over 10 seconds. The last one is we have here is our primary ultimate we're going to use most of the time, and that is Pestilence Colossus. Unleash a P Pestilence Flesh Colossus to pulverize enemies in the area. The Colossus smashes the ground three times over three seconds, dealing 8,913 damage, 9,804 damage, and then 10,698 disease damage with the first, second, and third smash. Each smash applies major vulnerability to the enemy, hit for three seconds, increasing their damage taken by 30%. And that is the skills. We're gonna go over CP, and I'm gonna go over this pretty quick. Starting with the red tree, we have 66 in ironclad. This reduces damage taken from direct damage attacks by 22%. We have two in a medium armored focus, increasing your physical resistance by 209 while wearing two, five or more pieces of medium armor. We have two into spell shield, increasing your spell resistance by 209. And then moving on over here, we have 56 into thick skin. This reduces your damage taken from damage over time effects by 20%. We have 56 into hardy. This reduces damage taken from physical poison and disease damage by 12%. And then we have 56 into elemental defender, reducing your damage taken from flame, frost, shock, and magic damage by 12%. Moving on over here, we have 32 into Quick Recovery. This increases your healing received by 8%. Moving on, 40 in Warlord, which reduces your Break Free cost by 16%. 16 into Sprinter, reducing your Sprint cost by 10%. 16 into Bashing Focus, reducing your Bash cost by 10%. And then moving on over here, we have 75 into Mooncalf, increasing your Stam Recovery by 14%. 14 into or 43 into tenacity increasing your magic and stamina of fully charged heavy attacks by 10 percent and then over here we have 40 into tumbling reducing your dodge roll cost by 16 percent and then 40 into shadow ward reducing your block cost by 16 percent moving on to the blue tree 43 into bless this increases your healing done by 10 percent this is mainly if you're using vigor um that's why i have this here you don't have to use this if you don't want it Moving on to the middle tree, we have 35 in the Physical Weapon Expert. This increases your damage done with light and heavy attacks for two-handed weapons and bow weapons, as well as werewolf form, by 20%. It affects all stamina weapons, but... Next, we have 40 in the Master at Arms. This increases the damage you do with direct damage attacks by 16%. This includes light and heavy attacks. We also get Retaliation, re Reposit, and Butcher, which all really greatly help you out in the long run. Moving on, we have 56 and the Mighty. This increases physical poison disease damage by 12%. 56 and the Precise Strikes increasing critical damage and critical healing uh, with abilities by 20%. And then 40 and the Thaumaturge increasing your damage done with damage over time effects by 16%. Now, just to let you guys know, this um, setup is, pr this is right here is primary the, the damage dealer setup. And I'm just going to show you guys how it looks when you're using it. So you guys can see for yourself and I will take it into a dungeon as well so you guys can see it and Before I get too far. I'm gonna let you guys in on a little secret. Um Because I get asked this all the time Sherman, can I play this as a? Um, there you go 30k DPS and that was running a really bad rotation. Can this play solo? Yes All all my builds like this can play solo if you want them to they, they work really good at that. All right, so we're going to do the same thing here. I'm going to do the same parse, but on this, as you saw with that other one, we did 30K DPS. If you guys want to see the results, here you go. We had 4,737 weapon damage with a 56% critical, 
80% critical damage, 5,000 physical penetration, and then down here, our Endless Hail was actually doing pretty good. Light Attack was doing 11k damage um, on when basically when you get them below 25% health. And then Executioner Strike did 14k, 24 with Blighted uh, Blast Bones. This thing does a pretty decent amount of damage. Um, but let's go ahead and see it on the on the bigger bigger thing. And this is a target skeleton made for organized groups. So you guys can see what it's like to get synergies and all the different buffs that you can get in, a, in an organized group. There you guys go. Almost 40k DPS. And if I had a, a, a Maelstrom bow, I can promise you I can get a lot more. Um, oops. I made a few mistakes already in my rotation because of the the... All right, there we go. 35,000 is what it came out to with that. And <clears throat> like I said, I can get it up to 40K with this most of the time, but it just depends on how concentrated I am on that um, setup. So I'm gonna let this run out, uh, run its course. Go ahead and use that. And we're gonna go check out this. 29,000 is what it came out with at the end. Um, why, I don't know. Oh, it, it didn't calculate the new one, so. There we go, calculated with the new one. As you can see, it shows all the buffs and everything we had. It shows that we were doing a lot better in our damage with that stuff because we had a lot more group buffs going on. Our Blighted Blast Bones hit for 40K. Um, we hit, were hitting with Veladrits for 16,000. So really good, 5,463 weapon damage with a 62% crit, 80% uh, percent weapon damage. And again, I'm not maxed out in physical pen. So. If I had higher physical pain in the group, I would actually do a lot better. Now let's go take a look at this thing in a dungeon so you guys can see for yourselves how well it can work. I got to set this to veteran, and we are going to jump over into, of course, you guys know which one, Depths of Malatar, to see this thing in action. Now I'm going to show you both the DPS setup, and then I'm going to show you it's in a, in a solo setup so you guys can see for yourselves, like, hey, oh, this thing does work in as a solo. Um, that way you guys know for... For certain <clears throat> so if you want to play this as a solo build or you want to play it as a DPS build you you get that choice um, and I'm gonna show you how to do it all right so I will die most likely because I don't have anything here to keep me alive so I'm gonna go ahead and swap bars I'm gonna get ready for the first pull of enemies And we're going to do this, and we're going to drop. Alright, I died. 21,000 DPS, not too bad. Now I'm going to set up for solo. Every DPS build I come in here with, I die. I always die until I set it for solo. And then usually I can get through it. So let me go ahead and set it for solo. So we're going to go ahead and get rid of Executioner Strike, and we're going to go over here to the guild. Undaunted, we're going to grab this Bone Shield, and then we're going to go to our class and grab the Bone Tyrant buff right there. Now we're going to buff up with our resistances, which is, is kind of funny because when you look at our resistances, we're almost at as high as a, a tank can be. Oh, oh. Barely, barely made it through that. But as you guys can see, it still works even as solo build. 
um, works out pretty good and I did 36,000 damage to those guys it wasn't too bad for a solo play it works out pretty good um, but that's pretty much it for the Soul Reaver guy that, that's the Soul Reaver in action in a dungeon um, so you guys can see for yourselves it does do really good DPS but if it's a matter of just knowing how to play it that's it take your time enjoy yourselves and you guys know what's coming next if you guys like this video, hit that like button. If you guys want to see more videos by me, you can subscribe. Other than that, I want to thank you all for watching. Until next time, have a wonderful day. And this guy might see you in-game. Bye.